we must begin the free coinage of gold and silver coins, not the limited coinage done now, the American uh, Eagle coins, for example, but coining as much gold and silver as the American people will allow to be brought into the mints. We have to adopt all the silver and gold in the world as money of the United States. What Congress did by monetizing all the gold and silver in the world instantly. Those people who talk about there not being enough gold in circulation don't know what they're talking about. It's not in circulation and it's not uh, treated as money because uh, of ignorance. People will bring it out of the coffers all over the world once we start calling gold and silver money. And we must regulate the value of all those coins and prohibit the practice of fractional reserve banking schemes. This is not a visionary program. It will be very difficult politically to put this into effect, but it is not visionary because this has happened twice in American history before. It happened at the end of the War of Independence when we had the same kind of rotting vegetable currency, continental currency, the same bills of credit. There was no gold or silver in circulation at the time. The economy was prostrate. All of these steps were taken and there was an economic recovery. Second, it happened in the South following the Civil War. The Confederate currency was destroyed. The uh, country was in economic trouble and we were under military occupation when these steps were taken. And they were taken in the North as well, the entire country. The currency was turned back to redeemable fiduciary currency and there was an economic recovery. It can be done again. The only question is, do the American people have the gumption to make it happen? Not, when will the politicians make it happen? I am afraid that the politicians are bought and that the vast majority are puppets of world bankers. The world bankers being on the Federal Reserve Corporation Board of Directors. This is not an American corporation, as, I, as you've seen when I listed off the member banks. We have to make it happen, and I believe in the American people. I believe that if enough Americans are informed about these issues that I'm discussing tonight, then there will be a big enough grassroots movement that will demand media attention. Let's talk about politicians' lies. You didn't know they lied, did you? You believed in them 100% because American blood runs through their veins and they say they're Christians. So we believe in them automatically. We believe they are uh, Jesus Christ's emissaries and they are here to do nothing but good, right? Let's talk about Congress and our money. In an interview regarding income tax and government fraud with Susan B. Anthony, John E. Tremaine stated in 1933, we now know that our government was bankrupted and whatever gold was in the US Treasury was handed over to the Federal Reserve Corporation, which is not a federal government agency. Roosevelt declared a national emergency and the banks closed for three days. Let's talk about liens. Congress can extract only so much money out of our economy. If private owners become bankrupt, then the bankers will come to own all the private assets throughout America. By encouraging Congress to spend money it does not have, the government forces Congress to turn around and put liens on American labor and American private property. That's why they spend money they do not have. They do not spend money because they care about programs for you. The programs aren't for you anyway. They are simply tools to bankrupt the middle class. If you want to see the future of America, look at Mexico. They did the same dastardly thing to Mexico as they're doing to the United States now. Brussels, Belgium is the center of the hub of the banking syndicate 
And that hub is, of course, loaning large sums of money to governments all over the world and to the Congress of the United States. It's like this. The more collateral I have, the more I can borrow from banks and the more I can secure. Governments are securing their international debt by putting liens on the persons and property of their citizens. Think of it very simply like this. A person goes to the department store and says to the clerk, I want that refrigerator, deliver it to me tomorrow, and send Willie Brown the bill. Next day, Willie Brown gets the bill and says, what's this? I didn't order this. Well, you see, the person who ordered the refrigerator is the federal government. The department store is the Federal Reserve Corporation, and the American people is Willie Brown. We don't order these goods, and they're not used for our, our purpose, but we pay the tab. The fraud is that Congress bankrupted the U.S. Treasury and turned all their gold over to the Federal Reserve banks, which are not federal agencies. The Federal Reserve is a municipal corporation created by an act of Congress, but it is still a corporation. And all that gold is now in their hands. Let's talk about manipulation. We have a manipulated economy. The Federal Reserve manipulates the economy to cause inflation by controlling the money supply and interest rates. Inflation puts a tremendous pressure on the middle class to turn all their assets over to the banks to finance food, clothing, electricity, water, the basics of life. You see, in the eyes of the Federal Reserve Corporation, the bankers and their political cronies, um, the American people are groundhogs paying ground rent for subsistence. The Federal Reserve is a very demonic organization, and it is no wonder that land has gotten to be so expensive. It is no wonder that labor has gotten to be so expensive. While they transfer a great deal of wealth out of the hands of the middle class and into the hands of the ruling elite, it is systematically designed to do that. It is not happening by coincidence. The report of the Peter Grace Commission documented in writing with proof that the individual income tax revenues that are collected and extracted by the IRS are not going to pay for government services. They're going to pay for interest on the national debt and they're going to pay for transfer payments to the people on the receiving end of social security payments. Money's being taken out of the economy and transferred elsewhere, either into social security beneficiaries or into the private stockholders of the Federal Reserve Corporation. How much interest are the American people paying on five to six trillion dollars, which the national debt is approaching? They admit that it's approaching six trillion, but it's more likely to be around 18 trillion dollars. And you know, this is besides the 26 trillion that Americans owe on credit cards, car loans, mortgages, and those kind of things. But people are paying $400 billion annually to discharge interest alone on the national debt that they have accrued. And that does not do anything to the principal, while the government year after year enlarges that principal. Congress was responsible for passing the Federal Reserve Act in the first place, and they're allowing it to remain on the books will bankrupt the assets of all the private Americans. We have to do something about it. What can we do? When Anthony asked Tremaine what the ordinary citizen who is fed up with his money being squandered can do, Tremaine answered this way. First, we have to take steps to eliminate the ignorance because the law is in place. The law is there to defend our rights. The purpose of the Constitution is above all to protect individual rights. 
If the American people want to fight this thing, we can do it. 